How's it going my dudes? Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to take a look at an upcoming banner that has gotten a lot of people hyped up about and I'm going to tell you whether the banner is worth pulling or not and what are my actions. As always, we will waste no time, we will dive right straight into it. We are going to take a look at Kikuno, the first fire rarity 5 star character. Leader buff, the Geisha quarters allure, fire characters attack plus 80%. Multi-ball attack plus 40% and HP plus 10%. This is not a unique leader skill. If you take a look at Marnie, she does have something very similar. Their leader skills boost multi-ball stats. And here's a skill, Hakun Yuin Oni Zakura, I got it right. Summoning a red Oni for 30 seconds with double strike plus 25% damage and penetration. And a blue Oni for 30 seconds with float and regeneration for 50 seconds. Deals fire damage to enemies hit. It has a skill cost of 550, which is kind of on the high side. Okay, ability number one, multi-balls direct attack damage plus 60%. Ability number two, when multi-balls appear, fever gauge plus 25, and multi-ball direct attack damage plus 3% caps out at 30%. Ability number three, as a main, while two or more multi-balls are present, fire characters attack plus 25%, and multi-ball attack plus 60%. So she is absolutely good for a multi-ball team, hands down, you don't even need to use her for a fire multi-ball team, she works well in any off-element multi-ball team as long as she's not the main, as long as she's the sub. So she will be the start of the multi-ball meta. Now, like I've said a dozen of times right now, there is a big difference between a multi-ball comp and a multi-ball power flip team. And this distinction is going to be very important towards the end of the video. Let's move on to the next character. Okay, so next we have Mitis, the wild merrymaking thunderbolt user. So she is a 5-star thunder type, and here's a leader buff. Numbing Beauty, Thunder characters attack plus 80% and during Fever, Thunder characters attack plus 100%. So she is going to be super key as a Thunder Fever character, mainly being used as a leader. Okay, and then here's a skill, Levin Rainfall. Facing the nearest enemy, call down a rain of Thunder arrows from the sky and deal Thunder damage 24 times to enemies around. Damage enhanced on enemies with Paralysis debuff. This is immediately to me an extremely good combo if you run Inaho and you follow up immediately with Mitis. Instant paralysis across the board and instant nuke and they are both really helpful in a thunder fever team. Ability number one, own attack plus 20%. During fever, own attack plus 60%. Ability number two, own attack plus 20% as well. And when entering fever, own skill gauge plus 30%. And ability number three, after using skill, own attack plus 50%, caps out at 100% and fill fever gauge by 500 for one time only, so basically the moment she uses her skill, pretty much even in co-op mode, you're going to push everyone into fever. So she can be very useful, especially if you have a, probably maybe an any as a, as a sub, I'm just throwing a character out there, maybe not any, but any gives you 100 skill gauge at the start. So that means the moment you enter fever, with ability number 2, you actually boost your skill gauge by another 30% again. So she is going to be one of the most meta characters for Thunder Fever team. If this is what you're looking for, you should be very excited about this. Now let's move on to the next character. We have Rue, who is a win 4 star character. Let's take a look at his leader buff, Innocent Adventuring Spirit. So cute! Okay, so when 4 or more beast type characters are in the party, Party members HP plus 30% and attack plus 60%, okay. So here's a skill, Storm Hound, rush forward and deal wind damage times 18 to surrounding enemies. Grants power flip damage buff plus 50% for 15 seconds. So it's kind of short for a power flip damage buff. I'd like it to, have to be like at least 20 seconds, but 50% is still pretty big. And the skill cost is rather low. Ability number one, for each beast type character in the party, power flip damage plus 10% caps out at 60%. Obviously you have six beasts, you cap out at 60%. Ability number 2, every 30 combo, leader attack plus 5% and it caps out at 100%. Ability number 3, as a main when own skill activates, grants all party members float buff for 10 seconds. Now I would say that she is... Hold on, is she a she? Now I would say that he is a pretty good power flip character, come combo user for the win team. But the thing is, currently win is having a shortage of power flip units, so you have Leon, but other than Leon, there's not really many characters that excel in power flip. You have combo based teams which you can use rule in because the nice thing about levitation for a power flip team except for fire power flip is that you can stock up a lot of combos before you land onto the flippers and therefore you're able to land level 3 power flips quite frequently. So if you are really crazy on power flip, this character could be quite useful. I really like ability number 2 for a power flip team because that is a lot of extra attack that you would do and that will really bring your numbers up a lot. Okay, moving on to the next character, we have Revy over here. She is going to be a fire 4 star character and the leader buff is Charisma Aura. Party members attack plus 100%, very clear cut. 
very straight to the point. Skill, Mill, Espadas, facing the nearest enemy and dealing high speed combo attacks. Oh, I like this already, this is going to be combo. Deal fire damage times 16 to enemies in the direction of movement. Damage scales with the number of buffs on self. So I don't have the math on this right now, but I'm going to assume that it's going to be about 5% extra damage per buff. Either 5 or 10%, it's usually around these two numbers. So the skill cost is rather low as well, and looking at ability number 1, leader HP plus 15%. Ability number 2, leader attack plus 25%, this is good. Ability number 3, as a main while combo count is at or above 30, grant all party members penetration buff until the next ball flip. This is good. Combo count needed for level 3 power flip, minus 6. Wow, okay I have a feeling that this is because she has been buffed in JP. I'm not sure whether in global you're gonna see a power flip minus 6. I don't think it is the case. But if it is, it is really quite good. So your maximum power flip needed to hit a level 3 power flip becomes 33 and not 39. So she is clearly going to be another combo slash power flip unit. Pretty much a similar but different style to Rue over here like I've mentioned before. Okay, moving on to Cran, we have the last unit over here. She is going to be a fire 3 star character and the leader buff is the Wind's Guidance. Fire characters attack plus 15%, while allies have float buff, fire characters attack plus 40%. This is not that good. The skill glory voice facing the nearest enemy should continuous flame arrows dealing fire damage to enemies hit, grant allies float buff for 8 seconds. The float buff is not very long, but the skill cost is rather low which is nice. Ability number 1, excluding own skill when skills activate, own skill gauge plus 10% for a maximum of 10 times. Uh, it's kind of like the flame sword in a sense, but I don't really like it as an ability. So it's similar to New Year's earlier. I don't like that there is a cap on it. So you gain some and you lose some. And ability number two, while allies have float buff, own direct attack damage plus 60%, while combo count is at or above 30, party immunity to poison debuff. Okay, so this is a little bit confusing. This is more like a direct attack unit. And the poison immunity is basically useless because you need to be at 30 combo. But the thing is, you really want poison immunity to be control. You don't want it to come just by chance. Ability number 3, as a main, after fire characters attack 60 times, fire characters attack plus 5%, caps out 100%. So this is going to be a heavy direct attack unit. And currently direct attack doesn't really have a place in fire teams. Honestly, fire power flip is very powerful. That is what everyone should be aiming for. Even if you are completely free to play, you just need a Hanabi and you are pretty much set. So here is my opinion on the units and am I going to summon or not? Okay, so personally, um, I'm not going to summon this banner. Not because the banner is bad. I think the banner is decent to above average. Now, Kikuno is going to be excellent, especially if you're using Marnie a lot. You can actually replace Marnie or maybe even use her in conjunction to Marnie. So you're going to have a lot of balls flying around, stacking up a lot of combos, dealing a lot of direct damage. But I think I may take back my word on the word a lot. I don't think you're going to be doing a lot of direct damage because multi-balls generally don't do that much. And moving on, I am probably not so keen on Meatis right now, right now, until we get our boy Anniversary Regis. But until that day comes, I don't really think I'm going to be focusing on a Thunder Fever team. I think I'm just going to stick to my Thunder skill damage team. It's extremely powerful. It's good all the way. And I also have every variation of it from instant one punch to big, big skill damage. And as for the rest of the units over here, I'm not too excited about them. I mean, they can be useful, especially if you really need that specific unit in that one specific lineup. But other than that, it doesn't really interest me so much. There are much better banners for me to save up for. And I am in particular looking forward to the Rolf banner because that will definitely cap out my power flip team to the max. So with that said, I hope this video has been helpful to you. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. This has been free to play by the way. And as always, I will see you in the next video.